Okay, so now we know what Darwin was reading about and scientists that came before Darwin that were uh, contributing to his thinking. But what did he observe while he was voyaging around on the Beagle, the HMS Beagle, that led him to come up with the idea of natural selection? Well, a couple of the things he observed, uh, well, first, first here, is that grasslands on different continents, because remember, the Beagle went all over the world and stopped at different continents, and each continent has what we would consider a grassland habitat. And he observed that the species in the in those different ha those different uh, on those different continents, even though they were in the same habitat, were different, which was unexpected in the day because they thought that species were created for their habitat to live in their habitat, and that if you have a grassland, whether it be in Africa or South America or Australia, it should have the same species. But that's not what Darwin observed. So he concluded that species were different because they had different ancestry and they evolved separately, allowing them to diverge. Now there's a word that you may not be familiar with. Diverge just means becoming different from each other because they are not closely related and they've evolved separately for a long time. They have become different from each other. They have diverged. Uh, <clears throat> that's short for divergent evolution. The other thing that he observed uh, were fossils. He found fossils as he was sailing around the world. And one particular uh, fossil that he found were of armadillos. And he found that the fossils, the, the fossil skeletons of armadillos, were much larger than the armadillos that were living today, showing that armadillos had changed over time. <clears throat> this was unexpected also in the day because it was thought that species didn't change over time. The species were created, and once they were created, they stayed the same forever. So he concluded that species living today evolved from species that came before them. So the armadillos, for example, that are living today evolved from armadillos that are found in the fossil record that came before them. So like it says down here at the bottom, Darwin would later, and that's because he didn't, he gathered all this information and made all these observations and recorded everything, but later, thinking about it, even after returning to England, years later, uh, came to see this vertical succession. In other words, as you go through the fossil record from deeper fossils to more shallow fossils, that's the vertical they're talking about. Um, this is evidence of continuous descent with modification. Descent with modification is what Darwin called evolution. In other words, he didn't really use the word evolution. He talked about descent with modification, which means the same thing. Modification is change, right? Descent is um, inheritance. So species inherit or change as they reproduce from generation to generation. They inherit modifications. They, in, they inherit change descent with modification. As I mentioned previously, the Galapagos Islands turned out to be a special place, and islands in general really show uh, evidence of evolution. And the Galapagos, here we see in the inset, uh, Ecuador, which is part of South America, so this is the coast of South America, a huge continent, right? And the Galapagos Islands are this little dot here off the coast of Ecuador, about 600 miles out, not not terribly far, but not terribly, terribly close either. Uh, and then what we're seeing here is a zoomed in uh, view of that, of the Galapagos archipelago, as we say, archipelago refers to a chain of islands. And these were created volcanically. So they just kind of sprung up out of the ocean by volcanic activity. And that volcanic activity continues today and continues to create them very similar to Hawaii. Hawaii is a volcanic archipelago also. So the islands are relatively young, but old enough that they have uh, that species have evolved on them over millions of years. Um, so what Darwin observed on the Galapagos Islands is that, is that species were very similar, yet somewhat different than those on mainland South America. So that was his observation, um, and he concluded that they had co they had common ancestry and that the Galapagos species descended from founders that arrived on the islands from the mainland. 
In other words, species flew to the Galapagos, blew to the Galapagos, floated to the Galapagos, um, so arrived on the Galapagos in a variety of ways from mainland South America. And then once they had arrived, they evolved to adapt to the different habitats on the different islands. And that's something else to note is that the Galapagos Islands have very different habitats because there are cold water currents that run past, run through, that um, cause the islands to have different climates and therefore different habitats. So when he compared species on different islands, he found similar species that had adapted to particular conditions of each island, which were very different, like I just pointed out. <coughs> so from these ob observations, his um, he proposed that life on Earth, and so he, he basically expanded the idea that if this can take place on islands, that the islands kind of represent the entire world and the continents of the entire Earth. So like life on the Galapagos Islands, life on Earth and on the different continents evolved over millions and really billions of years from common ancestors that lived before through the process of da, 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 natural selection or descent with modification. Um, so this cartoon, and by the way, these cartoons come, up from, come from a uh, book called um, The Cartoon Guide to Evolution. So he says here, markedly different but strikingly similar, referring to the species that he found on the Galapagos Islands that were similar to the mainland species of South America, but somewhat different because they had adapted to the islands. Notice he's standing on a giant tortoise, Galapagos tortoises. And as uh, a lot of times what are found on islands are giant species. Um, this cartoon um, refers to or, or uh, is concerning the idea that Darwin, in thinking about all these different things about evolution and how species change over time, which goes against everything uh, that was thought, you know, what we call natural history, uh, both religion and science in England at the time, um, his ideas went against. So you'll notice his head is on a platter, um, which is kind of an expression. Uh, if you're really in trouble, your head may be served on a platter, uh, as we say. So he knew he was in trouble. He knew that if he came back to England and let everybody know what he was thinking, that he might get in really serious trouble. So since Darwin knew that he could get in big trouble when he returned to England with all his specimens and all his notes and all his thoughts about evolution, he really didn't share it with anybody except for maybe his brother. Um, and so he sat on it for about 20 years. He had this great idea, knew he was right, but didn't really let the scientific community know about it for 20 years until he received a manuscript from Alfred, Alfred Russell Wallace, this guy. And this picture was put together. They, they, I don't think they were ever photographed together, or this photograph really wasn't taken when they were side by side. But anyway, um, Alfred Russell Wallace, like Darwin, was a British naturalist. And he came up with his own theory of evolution by natural selection. In other words, he came up with natural selection all by himself, um, just like Darwin did. <clears throat> and he did it by observing, like it says here, um, he'd been working for many years in the Malay Archipelago. So here, there's that word archipelago again, meaning a chain of islands. And Malay refers to Malaysia. So he was doing the same kind of, ob making the same kind of observations that Darwin was making in the Galapagos, but he was making it in the island chains of Malaysia. So again, islands are a great place to go to see evidence of evolution. Um, so in the cartoon, Darwin's freaking out because he's reading the manuscript. Manuscript is basically a, a rough draft of a paper, a scientific paper. So Alfred Russell Wallace knows that Darwin's working in the same area of thought as, as he is, or the same area of biology that he is, evolution, and uh, where species come from. That's really the question that Darwin was trying to figure out, is where do species come from? 
And so when Darwin sees the manuscript, and of course we don't know if it was in the bathtub or whatever, but he probably freaked out realizing that Alfred had come up with the same theory that he did or hypothesis that he did. And he might get scooped, basically, by Wallace. So that put a fire under his butt and he published The Origin of Species the next year. So just one year after receiving that manuscript, after sitting on the idea for 20 years, once he realized Wallace might scoop him, he published in about a year. And he did give Wallace credit, though. They did present a paper jointly um, for the Royal Society of Scientists uh, in England. But <clears throat> So Wallace didn't have such a huge amount of evidence or write as much as Darwin. Um, so Darwin was really first, and Darwin was really first, so Darwin is the one that we revere, but we have to note that Wallace came up with the same idea, which also speaks to the validity of the idea. We, you know, because two people independently came up with the same idea, it uh, suggests that that idea is very valid. So this is the first page in the book, just a, a an image of the first page on the origin of species. One of the things that Darwin wrote about to support the idea of natural selection is something that he was very familiar with, which is artificial selection. Um, for example, the species that we see here, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, kale, kohlrabi, all were selectively bred artificially from this ancestral species, which is a kind of mustard. Um, so by emphasizing different characteristics of that wild mustard, cauliflower and broccoli and kale and kohlrabi and Brussels sprouts were all created through selective breeding, which can be considered artificial selection. Darwin himself bred pigeons. So that's why I've got this little picture of pigeons here. And pigeons have, uh, you know, there are a wide variety of pigeons that have been bred. If you're a pigeon breeder, you uh, are very familiar with that. And Darwin was. <clears throat> so he was very familiar with how natural or how artificial selection worked. And he applied that idea to natural selection. So really, um, so one concept that, I just want to get across here to you is this concept of domestication. So these plants that we have created through selective breeding as food, or even ornamental plants, decorative plants that have been created through selective breeding or artificial selection, and all the animals that have been created through artificial selection, we can refer to them as domestic. They've been domesticated. They've been, um, the characteristics that they have have been created to serve some purpose for human beings. <clears throat> so this, this supports the functional capabilities of natural selection. In other words, this supports the whole idea of how natural selection works. Natural selection works just like artificial selection, except for what is doing the selecting. In natural selection, Mother Nature is doing the selecting. In other words, the environment is doing the selecting. Um, Whereas in artificial selection, humans are doing the selecting. That's really the only difference. So in the evolution of, uh, so in the origin of species, Darwin proposed his mechanism of evolution that he called natural selection. Um, and it has the, really the, the most concise and easy to remember, um, list of how natural selection works involves four things. And it's really best to remember them in this order. So natural selection starts with variation, genetic variation, genetic meaning variation in DNA, which causes or gives rise to variation in the species that has that DNA. So it starts with genetic variation. And you'll hear me say a million times in this course, variations, the raw material of natural selection and evolution. Remember that variation is the raw material of natural selection and evolution, just like clay is the raw material to produce a sculpture, right? Genetic variation is the raw material to allow for natural selection and evolution. Number two, overproduction of offspring. 
All species on the earth produce more offspring than can survive and reproduce. That's all that idea says, is that all species produce more offspring than can survive and reproduce. This leads to number three, the struggle for existence, which you can remember or sum up or put in parentheses is competition. Competition between individuals of the same species and competition between different species because there are different species that are competing for the same for the same resources just like there are individuals of the same species competing for the same resources so this is really referring to competition the struggle for existence the struggle not just to survive and exist but also to reproduce that's really the crux of the matter you have to reproduce and you have to survive long enough to reproduce. It's all about reproduction. Finally, we have differential survival and reproduction, as I just mentioned. So that's really what it's all about. Differential is a key word there, though, which means that for these individuals of the same species that are competing with each other, certain individuals are going to survive and reproduce, whereas others don't. That's the differential. There's a difference. Um, and some, some individuals are going to survive and reproduce and others aren't. Same with competition between species. Some species are going to survive and reproduce while other species don't. That's uh, a concept known as species selection. <clears throat> so the beaver cartoon here represents a misconception. So all three of these cartoons get to some misconceptions about evolution. And the beaver one, uh, the misconception is the idea that evolution is goal-oriented. That that evolution wants to create a beaver that is perfectly adapted for cutting down trees. And if that were true, then beavers would have chainsaws, because that's really the best way to cut down a tree. Human invention, but still. Um, so that can't happen. Um, and it really can't happen because evolution tinkers with the old to make the new. Evolution can only change what it has to work with. And what it has to work with is the genetic variation that's already there. So it can only tinker with that genetic variation to make uh, new varieties, new genetic varieties. And, and um, yeah, so it can only tinker with the old to make the new. Can't come up with anything fundamentally uh, new, just, you know, all of a sudden. The Gerald cartoon gets to the misconception that individuals evolve. So individuals do not evolve. Species evolve and populations evolve. Those are the smallest uh, units that can evolve. Species and populations. The baseball cartoon, again, represents that evolution is not goal-oriented. In other words, there was no goal for evolution to cause species to move from life in the water to life on land, right? Which is the evolution of tetrapods, um, the first tetrapods being amphibians. So the evolution of amphibians, that wasn't a goal of evolution to push fish out of the water and, and evolve into amphibians. Um, that's a misconception in evolution, that there is some kind of goal to evolution. Like, the worst misconception is that the goal of evolution was to create human beings. That, was, that is not a goal of evolution. There is, there is no goal to evolution. Darwin also wrote about inherited variation. You know, he knew by observing species that, and individuals of the same species, and in his selective breeding work with pigeons, he knew that individuals varied between each other, that there were differences between them. He didn't know anything about DNA and that these differences arose from genetic variation, um, but he did know that they that there was variation and that this variation between individuals of the same species was really important. Now, in his day, um, they viewed these differences between individuals as defects. In other words, you know, if uh, species were created, then they should have been created perfectly. And if they're not exactly the same, if individuals of the species were not exactly the same, then that they, those must be mistakes. They must be defects. But Darwin viewed them as, as the variation necessary for natural selection. In other words, if there is no variation, there's nothing for natural selection to select from. Because everything's the same, right? 
There's nothing to select if everything's the same. <clears throat> so the variations in phenotype, and you may recognize that term and you may not, but phenotype refers to the traits that you can actually see um, and observe uh, or discover about a species or between individuals of a species, phenotype are due to variations in genotype. In other words, the genes, the DNA. Genotype refers to um, genetics, gene. And genetic variation results from, and again, this is nothing that Darwin knew, but it's what we now know where the variation comes from. The variation in, in between individuals of a species comes from the variation in the DNA between individuals of a species. And there are three sources of that genetic variation. There are gene mutations and chromosomal mutations. And mutation, you know, you may think of as a negative term, but it's not always negative. A good mutation is an adaptation. That's where adaptations come from. Adaptations start out as mutations, and sometimes those mutations are good and uh, give rise to adaptation. So note in, in uh, quotation marks here, accidental mistakes <clears throat> during DNA replication, and that's where gene mutations come from, and this, this figure represents gene mutations, um, and cell division, and that's where chromosomal mutations, this figure represents chromosomal mutations, that's where they come from, during DNA replication and cell division. Mistakes. Shuffling. Shuffling of genes, just like shuffling cards, uh, recom recombining genes from two, two different parents. So sexual reproduction uh, produces, genetic, produces variation between individuals. It's a new combination of genes that didn't exist before. You know, you are a unique combination of genes from your parents. And therefore, you have different characteristics from your parents. And, and Natural selection could act on those differences between you and your parents and your siblings and everybody else on the planet, every other human on the planet. That's the idea of natural selection. Thirdly, uh, there's this concept of horizontal transfer where genes can be transferred from one organism to another organism. And this is this was first discovered and primarily happens in microbial individuals, in other words, bacteria mainly. However, we are finding that even multicellular organisms are, are, uh, have some of this horizontal transfer where genes can be transferred from one individual to another. So you just need to be aware that that exists and that is part of the story of evolution uh, comes from that idea of horizontal transfer, the transfer of genes between individuals. So like I said, Darwin had no idea about genes, about chromosomes, about where the variation that he observed came from. But he did know that this, that variations were passed from parents to offspring. That, you know, it, it was all about heritable variation. And variation, as I want to stress here, obviously, variation is the raw material of natural selection and evolution. 